Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to The Railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm looking at what was once a very rare and sought after steam loco from Hornby. In double O gauge we are blessed with a fantastic range of BR standard locomotives. For a long time we've had class 9Fs, we've had class 5s, class 4s, good range of standard tank engines as well. But also for the longest time there was a big gap in the selection of standard locomotives and that was in the shape of the class 6 or the clan class. And for a really long time, if a modeler wanted one of those ready to run, well, tough, there just wasn't one available. But back in 2009, Hornby produced a clan class, a standard class six at long last. And modelers rejoiced, you know, finally, this gap in the range has been filled. But the problem was they didn't produce very many. And in fact, I think beyond 2009, the class was no longer in the Hornby range. It might have even just been a single run. And what happened is the Class 6 became a very rare and sought after model and the second hand value of the models shot through the roof. So realistically, if you missed out on that initial run, you're back to square one. You're not really gonna be able to get a clan. However, in recent years, Hornby announced the return of their clan class model. It's coming back to the range and it's gonna be readily available. You might think, great, problem solved, but the same old problem persists, and that is the price. So if you want to get the new clan from Hornby, it's gonna set you back £217.99. And when I saw that price, I thought, you know, for a model that's over 10 years old now, I'm not gonna bother. I don't wanna spend all that money just to get a clan. And I'm sure many people felt the same way. However, much more recently, I spotted at Kerno the clan class had been reduced quite significantly. And I managed to pick up this one for £159.99. Now, to be clear, that is still an awful lot of money. That It doesn't seem like a bargain, really, does it? However, the price was low enough that I decided it might be worth picking one of these up to see what they are like. And that's a good question, isn't it? What are these models like? For years, I've known they existed, but have never been able to try one. So it's quite a big day. Now, the Class 6 was very similar to the Class 7, the Britannia class in real life. So I've got questions about how similar this model is going to be. For instance, have Hornby used their Class 7 model to produce this? If so, does this model have the smaller boiler that the Class 6 should have? Or is it just a Class 7, you know, dressed up as a Class 6? I don't know. I have absolutely no idea at all about this model. But we're going to take a look together today and find all of this stuff out. So let's take a look. Let's see if it's worth the money, see what the model is like, and hopefully have a good time. Here we go. All right, the Hornby Clan class. And as you can see, mine is in the early BR green. And to be honest, there's not that much choice in terms of livery. In fact, this could be the only one available from Hornby early BR green. Uh, but obviously that's partially because these were quite short lived in real life. They didn't exist before the nationalization. So you're not gonna get pre-grouping or grouping liveries with these. So yeah, it is quite limited. Let me show you the end of the box though. So the product code for this is R3995. It is early BR, clan class 462. Yeah, these are Pacific locomotives, just like the class sevens. And this is clan McDonald number 72004. And this is a DCC ready locomotive. Let me show you the back of the box. So these were classified as a 6P or a 5F. Slightly weaker, I understand, than the Class 7s. Slightly lighter as well, more on that later. And then there is a brief history on the Class 6, as you can see there. Pause and read it if you want to. And then my favorite part of the packaging on the end here, you've got the drawings from Hornby, and these are dated 2008. Obviously these were drawn before the release of the model, which I believe took place in 2009. So, really interested to see what this is like. Of course, Hornby produced great models back in 2009, so I'm not too concerned about the level of detail and such. Although I suppose it could be a little bit dated in terms of flashy features, not expecting lights and such, although of course you would at over 200 pounds. So let's crack in and let's take a look. 
All right, it's not even had the sleeve off this box yet. So here is the first look at the Hornby clan. Now I'm not an expert when it comes to standard locomotives. So I reckon if I saw one of these and I didn't see the fact that it says Clan MacDonald on it, I would probably mistake this as a Britannia loco. I'm really interested to put this next to a Britannia and see what the differences actually are. If any, yeah, it should be interesting. Anyway, let's pull this out and let's take a look. Hopefully, yeah, we've got some instructions here. So let's see if this gives us any clues. Yeah, there's a clue straight away. Britannia class 7MT, Clan class 6MT. So that suggests to me that at least the chassis here are largely the same. Uh, let's take a look. I assume so. I understand that the chassis and the running gear were largely the same in real life, so it makes sense that Hornby would uh, use the same ones in model form as well. So yeah, lubrication points, locomotive to tender coupling, yeah, that's fair enough. A few accessories, looks like cylinder drain cocks and some vacuum pipes for the buffer beam, fairly standard. Looks like you have got to keep an eye on this lubricator during disassembly and reassembly to make sure it locates properly, so I'll bear that in mind. And, oh blimey, there's also a speedo assembly which has to be removed in order to remove the body. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem dreadfully convenient, but I will want to show you the chassis, so I'll be facing that later. DCC ready, yeah, it shows you where the decoder goes, in this case it's in the tender. And then on the back, removable coal, that's a good feature. And brake rods, uh, not clear whether those are fitted from the factory or not. Guess we'll find out. All right, let's see what you get in the pack then. Let's see about these accessories. So, let's take a look. I mean, quite obviously we've got an instruction pack in here for an alternative axle, and there it is. So this right here is a flanged axle which you can put in where the pony is, and that will allow the model to look a bit more realistic while not being able to take tighter curves anymore, of course. There's the brake rigging, so note that's not fitted from the factory. We've got some screw link couplings in there, real pivoting ones. That's always a feature I enjoy seeing, even though I don't use them, it's a bit strange. Uh, coupling, presumably for the front of the loco. Cylinder drain cocks, which have been painted, that's a good feature. And a few of the other bits and bobs that were mentioned on the instructions. So that all looks good, but now though, let's take a look at this locomotive. Old model dates back to 2009, but produced recently, so hopefully the quality of the decoration and the finish and such should be up to modern standards. All right, let's find out whether that's the case. All right, and you know what? Yeah, that doesn't look too bad, does it? There is a bit of a shine going on with the boiler. Um, it's nothing crazy. It doesn't hit you like it does on a Backman model, for example, but generally speaking, that does not look too bad. Let's lift this up then and see what the weight is like, see what the first impressions are. All right, yeah, pretty good. It seems like a fairly heavy model, and I'm pretty sure the Britannia was the same in that respect as well. Yeah, fairly weighty models, both really. Okay, so yeah, this looks really nice. The finish on the boiler is genuinely not bad at all. Yeah, that is quite noticeable, in fact. And the level of detail certainly seems pretty decent at the very least, doesn't it? So we'll take a much closer look at this model in just a second. We'll take in some of its details, see what the quality is like. I will decide on that and get back to you. For now, though, let's have a bit of history and background on the Class 6 in real life. The Clan Class, or the BR Standard Class 6, was a small class of just 10 Pacific steam locomotives designed by Robert Riddles and introduced to the railway in 1951. The clan was based on the larger standard class 7, or Britannia, locomotives, but featured a smaller boiler and other weight-saving measures in order to improve the route availability of the design. As such, many parts were shared between the classes 6 and 7, such as the frames, the tenders and the running gear, which made maintenance much simpler and therefore much cheaper. The Class 6 was generally a decent locomotive, although not the easiest to fire, according to crews, which made them prone to lateness, and it was difficult, apparently, to keep the trains on time. This led to the clans gaining a bit of a bad reputation in some circles. Throughout their lifetimes, the clans served largely up north, on the Settle to Carlisle route, the Glasgow to Crewe, Edinburgh to Leeds, to name just a few, and they served pretty much right up until the end of steam, with the final withdrawal not being made until June 1966. Today, though, no original clan-class locomotives survive under preservation. 
Before we do move on to the detail section, I decided to put the Class 6 next to the Class 7, just for a small comparison, and I can confirm that the two are not just identical. The Class 6 is not just a repaint of the Class 7. The boiler is slightly smaller, and there are lots of other subtle differences as well. I'm pretty sure the chassis is probably the same, and no doubt the two different models share partly the same tooling, but the Clan is not just a repaint of the Britannia. So here is a close look at the Hornby Clan class. And you know what? This thing is pretty awesome. It's actually quite a lot better than expected. The decoration and the finish look modern and quality, so we'll take a close look at that in a minute. The level of detail is very, very impressive. Astonishing, really, given how long this model has been around. And dare I say it, even the quality is acceptable. The quality is far from impressive, and this is a Hornby loco, so what do you expect? But I would go as far as to say the quality is acceptable. Let's talk about the quality issues to start with, though, because I do want to get those out of the way. The loco bodywork is largely plastic, so that goes for the boiler and also the running plate. This is not a major problem, though, because, as you can see here, the running plate is nice and straight. And also the weight of the model is very, very good. It weighs in at 467 grams, which is very, very heavy. That's similar to the new Hornby Hush Hush, which was also very heavy. And in fact, that's only a few grams lighter than the Class 7, the Britannia, even though in real life the clans were supposed to be quite a bit lighter than those. So the weight and the aesthetics of the model have not been negatively affected by the plastic nature of the bodywork. However, there is quite a bit of glue visible on this model, which is obviously never okay. Models that cost this much should be assembled more accurately. There should be some of that money invested in better quality control and in better instruction and training for the staff who are actually assembling these things. Similarly, the handrails look absolutely terrible. No idea what's gone wrong with these, but there's this sort of mottled, possibly gluey effect on them just not acceptable at this sort of price at all. And the other thing is the lack of any sort of etched nameplates. I mean, where are they? This is a £217.99 model at RRP. What excuse is there for not providing proper etched nameplates? So, yeah, the value for money seems to suck as far as I'm concerned, and the quality isn't impressive, but as you can see, the overall effect of the model is not diminished by the small number of quality issues. So let's talk about this model then, let's look at the decoration. The boiler banding is pretty good, it's not astonishingly good quality, but I think up close it looks reasonably good. And there is a fair bit of decoration here, for instance the side of the cab is nicely lined, you've got the classification and the running number on there, the running plate is nicely lined, and the precision is still there even at the front end where the shape is quite complex. The cylinders are fully lined as well. You've got a fair amount of separately fitted and separately painted pipework, which obviously does look a little bit plasticky as per usual, but there's nothing too wrong with that. And there is quite a bit of pipework as well, isn't there? Look at this all on the top. Quite complex stuff, really, and here, at least, there is no visible glue, so the effect is really quite strong. The front buffer beam is separately painted, and we do have a screw link coupling pre-fitted, which is a marvellous feature, very pleased to see that. And while we're here, yes, there are separately fitted metal and sprung buffers, so that's a great feature in the quality. The smoke box door is nicely decorated with the running number and shed code, and as I said earlier on, the finish of the model is genuinely not too bad. There's a definite noticeable satin sheen here, which makes the model look far better quality than, in fact, the Britannia I looked at, which I think looked much more plasticky. In terms of detail then, we've got these separately fitted smoke deflectors, which also have handrails on them. At least the handrails are fine on those. We have separately fitted metal safety valves, and these are quite a bit finer than the ones on the Britannia, so the effect is even stronger there. Quite a bit of complexity on the boiler with the separately fitted pipework and such, all of that looks wonderful. And then you've got the linkage for the various controls and such, which is nicely depicted on the side of the boiler. The top of the cab has this opening air intake, which is manoeuvrable and poseable, so that's a, a nice little feature. Uh, quite easy to move those as well. And while we're looking at the cab, you can see we've got nice glazing, which is flush with the outside of the body. The front-facing windows are lined, which look great. You've got proper window frames on those. 
The cab doors are pre-fitted, which is good to see, and inside the cab there is a fair amount of detail. The gauges are fully picked out and there are several separately fitted parts. That is genuinely a very, very good cab. The wheels are the regular Hornby wheels, which means moulded plastic with metal tyres. The axles have been painted over though, so that looks good and realistic. And the valve gear and all of the connecting and coupling rods, they all look great. They're all very fine, as you can tell, and fortunately there is no speedo included on this model, which should make disassembly a little bit easier. Generally, the Loco is quite a complex one, isn't it? The level of detail is great, and the effect is pretty strong. Let's take a look at the tender then, which just like the Loco is pretty well decorated. You've got the decent lining there, nice early British Railways crest, which looks good. Underframe detail, quite complex as well. Most of this is molded, but the effect again is good. And you do have that separately fitted water scoop on the base. And if you decided you wanted to fit the brake rigging, then the level of detail could be improved even more. Some of the controls on the front of the tender are separately painted, as you can see. And as per the instructions, we do have this separately fitted coal load, which is quite easy to remove. Or in fact, you could just put your own coal on top of that if you wanted to be a bit more realistic. Around the back, you've got separately fitted handrails, a very fine separately fitted ladder, which looks just great. Separately fitted lamp brackets, more sprung buffers around the back. No screw link coupling fitted to the rear tender hook, although one was provided in the accessories bag. And then you've got this standard NEM coupling, which uh, seems to be pointing upwards a little bit, but hopefully that's fixable. And that has a very, very slight pivot to it, uh, which hopefully means this should be able to take curbs with rolling stock without any problems. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a very, very expensive model. I'm not necessarily sure that it meets the mark it needs to in order to be considered good value, but certainly the level of detail is quite impressive, the quality is not terrible, and as I say, the overall effect is quite a good one. So generally, this is better than I was expecting, but that's only in terms of the level of detail. What's the mechanism like? How does this loco perform? Well, that's what we need to find out next. So there she is, the Hornby Clan class down onto the track, and I've just filmed the first performance test, and I'll show you how that went in just a second. Now though, I want to talk a little bit about the mechanism, and I've got to be honest, it's better than I remember the Britannia mechanism being, although I am pretty sure the two Locos do have the same chassis. So let's talk about this, obviously all of the Loco driving wheels have pickups and the tender wheels have pickups on them as well, which leads to six pickups per track, so that's fine, you're not going to get any reliability issues with that. We do have the traditional old-fashioned Hornby draw bar, but do you know what, it's reasonably subtle, the close coupling isn't too bad, and they have twisted up the cabling quite nicely so that it's not too distracting. The base keeper plate is fairly easy to remove, it's just held on with two screws, although as you can see it is hardwired in place, which makes accessibility a little bit tricky, and in fact when I wanted to replace this base keeper I had to take the body off and pull the wires through, which is obviously much less convenient than proper spring-loaded contacts for the pickups. Underneath the base keeper you can see it's quite over lubricated, it is pretty much swimming in oil, you definitely don't need that much oil on a mechanism like this. However you can see proper turned metal bearings on the driving axles which is a really high quality feature. One single driven axle so it's not over engineered in any way, it is the rear wheel that's driven. And then removing the body, you can see we've got the heavy die-cast chassis. This is where most of the Loco's weight comes from. This is the same chassis as the Britannia. I checked, so yeah, go figure. Five-pole motor here, according to Hornby.com, although as you can see, there is no flywheel fitted to it, which I think is a pity. Again, this is a very expensive Loco. It's a very large Loco. There would have been space for a flywheel, and yet there isn't one. And also, it's not a particularly beefy motor, is it? We've seen much bigger, better motors than this in Hornby Pacifics. Not sure why they've chosen to use this smaller one in the Britannia and the Clan, because obviously, like I say, there's loads of space. There's also no extras on this model in the way of lights or smoke or anything like that. It is just a very box standard chassis. The gauge though comes in at 14.1 to 14.3 millimetres back to back, which is a little bit inconsistent. Yeah, every axle was different, but none of those are too far from the standard, I would say. So no major problems. 
So I think the mechanism ticks most of the boxes. It's not particularly simple to access and service, but it is doable, I think. So no major complaints. Okay, let's move on then, and I will show you what happened during the performance test. Moment of truth then, it is time for the first performance test. Now you guys will know for sure, but I think there's a good chance that this shares the same chassis as the Hornby Britannia did. And if so, that could be a problem because my Britannia was not a great performer. It seemed geared to run quite fast, as you can see, and the slow speed performance wasn't that great as a result. Maybe I just got unlucky with my Class 7. Maybe this has a completely different chassis. Um, like I say, you guys will know, I haven't checked the chassis yet. But hopefully, for £217.99 RRP, this will be a perfect runner, because there's no room for it to be otherwise, is there, at such a high price. Okay, forwards direction. First question, does the Loco actually work? Here we go. Okay, yeah, we've got some life. And of course this has not been run in yet, so it's not necessarily going to be at its best straight away. Obviously during the review I will give this 30 minutes in each direction to properly bed in. But um, at the moment it doesn't seem too bad, that seemed like quite a good little takeoff, didn't it? Seems fairly smooth, reasonably quiet. Um, models can get faster as they run in, so maybe this will change. But at the moment I wouldn't say this is going too quick. Let's try a 50% run past. Oh, okay, yeah, I mean, fairly quick, I suppose. Uh, it doesn't seem criminally fast or anything, but yeah, maybe that is about the same as the Britannia was. So we'll just have to see. Let's find out what the crawl's like then. Let's try that. Again, this will probably be better later on once it's had some chance to warm up, but straight out of the box. Yeah, already you can see it's not the best. Um, hands off the controller now. You can see it keeps stalling. When it does move, there's quite a bit of cogging. Let's help it along a bit. To be honest, it doesn't seem quite as bad as the Britannia, but still not impressive, I would say. And certainly not what you'd expect for well over £200 RRP. And frankly, even for what I paid, which was £159.99, you'd expect better than this. But maybe that's unfair. Maybe this will get better as it runs in. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Let's we'll see if it's any better in reverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not noticeably a lot better in reverse, actually. It's not very useful, that, is it, particularly? But, yeah, fair enough. Okay, so it needs a warm-up. Let's send this forwards. Let's see how it gets on around the track. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely quite speedy, isn't it? Pretty much the same as the Britannia was. So yeah, probably the same chassis. However, it does seem quite smooth. It's fairly quiet and I'm not noticing it slowing down on the second radius. Now things could be very different later on when I'm running it more slowly and more realistically and with a load. Maybe things will slow down there if there are issues with the torque. Um, but right now on its own at 50% speed, it seems to be performing perfectly. So I'm gonna let this run. I'll come back to you in an hour's time once it's done 30 minutes in each direction. And then we'll do some more testing and I'll make a final call on what I think about the performance. Okay, see you in a second. Okay, I am back and running in is complete. And you know what? Compared with the Britannia, which was a bit of a nightmare really, the valve gear was getting stuck and it was clicking and it was slowing down on curves. This is absolutely fine. No such problems with this which is very surprising because, as I say, as far as I can tell, the two chassis are identical. But this one's very smooth, very quiet, no clicking. I never noticed it slowing down on the second radius. It never cut out on points. It really has just been the perfect performer. The pulling power is not too bad either. In fact, it's better than Britannia. Again, go figure, because Britannia was heavier. Uh, yeah, 0 0.66 newtons or 38 coaches on straight and level track. I have to just put that down to the fact that this loco seems to be much more lively. Maybe I got lucky with this one and the motor is slightly better because it seems to run really, really well. But what is it like at the slow speed now? Because the crawl was not that impressive before. Obviously now the loco's had chance to warm up, so let's see if it's any better. Let's start in reverse. I think it was slightly better in reverse before. And yeah, that's not too bad. No flywheel, of course, so there is a fair bit of cogging here, but I would say that is generally not too bad. 
bit fa bit faster. Yeah, and even at that speed, it's quite smooth. But how is forwards now? I think that's the more important one. Let's have a look. Weird noise. Yeah, still not great. I'm going to turn up a bit more. Yeah, it's struggling, isn't it? Kind of inches forwards and then it stalls. Doesn't sound too healthy. Yeah, it's not really performing up to standard, is it? At least not at the low speed. Generally, it's better than expected, but it's still not performing as you'd expect a 200 pound plus locomotive to. I think it's just about acceptable, but not quite as good as I was expecting. Anyway, let's see how this loco performs under load. So to test that, I've set up seven Mark I coaches. Obviously, that's not a massive train, but it should be a decent test of this loco's torque, which, by the way, doesn't seem too bad at all. If I stop the loco and give it some power, let's go up to 50, you can see it's easily able to turn its wheels with my finger there, which goes back to what I was saying about this loco seeming to have much better torque than the Britannia did. But anyway, let's see if I can do a nice steady coupling. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to try and keep this steady. Yeah, it's not dreadfully smooth, is it, to be honest? I'm trying to do this smoothly, but it is fluctuating quite a lot in speed. So it's definitely not a five-star performer. And frankly, it, it needed to be, didn't it, in order to get the, the top scores. Uh, but hopefully we are coupled there. Let's just focus in. Okay, and let's see if she can handle these. Here we go. I'm going to go a bit slower this time because I think 50 looks a bit fast for this loco. So I'm going to try it at 40 and see if we get any torque issues. Yeah, I think that looks quite sensible. So elsewhere on the layout, I've got some other BR standard locomotives. So see which ones you can spot. And I've also got an odd one out. So if you see which one that might be, comment down below and I will pin the first correct answer. On the middle line though, I've got my Hornby Britannia, which I've obviously mentioned quite a lot today. So it makes sense to run that one with a short freight train, not too much. And then on the inside line, I've got the BR Standard 9F, which is of course the biggest standard of them all, with a bit of a Pullman train. There she goes, that is the Hornby 9F. Evening star, in fact. Okay, so let's catch up with the clan class. Let's see how she performs with a rake of coaches. Okay, so let's see how she gets on around these curves. Right, so I think there was a very, very slight slowdown there, but certainly nothing too serious. And I'm pretty sure the Britannia was much worse than that. So overall, I'm going to say the performance seems to be quite decent. We've obviously seen much, much better. And not only that, we've seen much better from much cheaper locos as well. So value for money, not really very impressed by that, but the performance is adequate. It's a good looking loco, that's for sure. The level of detail is definitely there. And certainly if you can find this loco at a bit of a discount like I did, it certainly becomes a much better deal. So overall, I would say, well, this is far from a perfect loco, and obviously that's usually true. Generally speaking, it is a pretty good loco. It ticks most of the boxes, and it does seem to be a fairly good quality model. So I find myself being able to recommend this far more highly than the Britannia, which I wasn't necessarily expecting, but still quite a pleasant surprise. And now for some ratings on the Hornby clan class. Overall, things are a little bit better, I think, than I was expecting. The level of detail is pretty much second to none. In fact, there's only one thing I would criticise in this area, and that is the lack of etched nameplates. Besides that, everything else is spot on. We've got proper screw link couplings, sprung buffers, super detailed cab, really good paint job, excellent finish. You name it, this model has got it. So besides the etched nameplates, perfect as far as detail is concerned. The performance is better than expected, but still not fantastic. It is much better than the Britannia, and I was worried that it would be about the same as the Britannia, so that's good. However, the low-end performance is not fantastic, and it does still seem to be geared to be quite a fast runner, which is not really that useful, is it? Particularly when the performance at the low end suffers as a result. However, it is good and smooth, even at the higher speeds, plenty of torque this time, and the valve gear seems to be quite a bit sturdier on this as well, with no clicking or anything. I seem to remember the Britannia was quite bad for that. 
The pulling power though is fantastic and surprisingly much better than on the Britannia even though the Britannia was much heavier. So that goes to show how much more torque the clan has got. Now this doesn't make sense because the chassis as far as I know are exactly the same which makes me suspect perhaps some sort of motor fault with my Britannia because noticeably the clan has so much more torque when it runs and such. But either way, yeah, 38 coaches, straight and level track, um, 0.66 newtons, that is more than the Britannia at 0.58. The mechanism is pretty good, it ticks most of the boxes, pickups on all of the driving wheels and the tender wheels, proper bearings. Uh, it's not that serviceable, the base keeper plate is hardwired. It does however have a good quality heavy diecast chassis, 5 pole motor which seems to work well, no flywheel though so obviously it has to lose a couple of marks for that. The quality generally is really really good. I would like to have seen a little bit more die cast in the bodywork and perhaps the running plate. I don't think that would have been unreasonable at such a high asking price. And obviously the presence of a few glue marks is completely unacceptable at these new latest RRPs. However, there was no major issue. All of the parts have stayed intact. The quality of the finish is good. The build quality is not that bad. So I've given it four star yet. Yeah, generally speaking, there's not that much to complain about. The value for money though, as usual from Hornby, is where this model falls down. £217.99 as an RRP is just not representative of this loco as far as I'm concerned. In order to be worth that, this loco would have to be top quality. It would have to have no missing features and it would need to have a bang up to date mechanism with lights and perhaps a few special features as well. As good as this model is, it doesn't really have anything like that for me. The price I paid is certainly better, £159.99, but I still feel like that's a lot of money for what you actually get, so I've given it just two star on value. Overall though, that is a score of 7.35 out of 10, which is slightly better than the score I gave to Britannia, and I think that is deserved. So into the logbook we go then, and that is 21st place above the Hornby B12 and below the Backman Crab. Besides the value for money, I think this is genuinely a very, very good model. Well folks, thank you very very much for tuning in for another review, I hope you enjoyed seeing this and to be honest it was quite fun to finally get a chance to show off the Hornby clan class. It's one that I've wondered about for a long time, one that I've read about for quite a long time and finally I've been able to do a review. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any thoughts on the Hornby clan then feel free to comment down below, maybe you've got one or you've had experiences of your own, I'd love to hear what you think. But for now, I think that will just about do it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you very, very soon for another review. All right, cheers, everybody. Take care.